Welcome, I'm going to start doing some videos on some HP 9000 computers. This architecture kind of fascinated me, mostly the older HP 9000s that had a ton of expansion slots and lots of different things you could plug and play into them. This is actually down here a little bit newer one called an HP 310 with the Motorola 68010 processor. And I haven't yet got around to making an intro video for this to really go through these various machines that I have and um, how they work and how the architecture goes together. I'm jumping a little bit ahead to talk about something about creating an HP drive, which is an emulated drive um, that you can set up with images to boot images onto the computer. The computer itself comes with no storage. Storage is attached uh, via GPIB or HPIB uh, via this cable here and you would typically you would have an external hard drive or an external dual floppy unit um, and I actually do have some of those that I will probably talk about in another video but another option is this HP drive project that I found on the internet. You can build yourself a Linux or Windows computer with a GPIB card in it and then you can run this HP drive software and it will simulate an HP uh, disk drive like the dual floppy unit or the floppy hard drive unit and then you can easily load images onto that and then boot them on the computer uh, and that's what I've done. I've created this um, relatively small thin client computer um, I assembled that, I put a GPIB adapter in it and then I downloaded the HP Drive software as well as Ubuntu from the internet and I was able to get this to boot HP UX, which is a Unix variant, on the HP 310. Um, we've got a couple other things cobbled together here. I have a keyboard adapter. I'll be talking about that in another video. Learned about how to do that from the HP uh, mailing list. And a Pi KVM, which is a Raspberry Pi um, keyboard, uh, video, and mouse um, over IP, which you can use to bring this up on a Windows computer so I don't have to have another monitor sitting over here and another keyboard. Um, anyway, this video is going to really talk about assembling this thin client. These thin clients are great because they're small and you can add an adapter onto it to get a PCI slot and a lot of your vintage um, stuff you'll want to do like a GPIB board or an old SCSI board or something you'll need a PCI slot so this is how you can get yourself a relatively small Linux computer with that PCI slot so anyway let's go into taking apart the thin client adding the expansion and putting the GPIB all that stuff okay so I'm gonna build myself an HP drive what that is is a small computer with a GPIB interface running software that allows it to look like an HP or an HPIB disk drive so you can emulate um, one of the 9122 or 9121 floppy drives you can emulate a 9133 or 9134 hard drive etc and what I have here is this thin client so this thin client is just a small self-contained computer you can see it's got a VGA port, keyboard port, USB ports, Ethernet port um, they're just nice, a small, compact form factor. I have an expansion to go on the bottom of it that will allow you to connect a card to it. It's got adapters for um, a PCI card or a PCI Express card. And so I think we need to swap it out and put this uh, PCI version in instead of the PCI Express that's there now. And then I have, this is a National Instruments GPIB adapter card, so we will put that in there, and then we will have all of this we can put together. And one other thing I have is this small Transcend. Another thing I have is this little Transcend uh, solid state disk in an IDE form factor that we can put in there. That will be our storage. So let's take and put all of this together. It's been a while since I took one of these apart. I seem to remember it came apart fairly easily. Just 
times like this I realize I've forgotten what I'm doing. There, I think this this piece here just somehow is supposed to pull out of there. Ah, slides forward. There we go. That piece slides off like so. This piece comes off. Huh. Maybe this is where the slot, yeah, that's where the slot's going to go up through there. So this piece will end up mounting to there. We just need to take this out and swap it, the PCI Express, out for the PCI card. Is that right? Goes in like that. Yeah, so that's going to go in there. Need to swap those parts out. Now it's interesting there's on this replacement board it does not have the header for this fan. I don't know why. Um, the PCI Express version had a plug for the fan, but the PCI uh, connector does not have a plug for the fan. It's not really important. I don't think that we have a fan. There's a little clip here that will hold the PC board in place. So we just need to take our GPIB adapter, get it pushed into there. It's looking good. Plastic clip in place. I think we got it. Will the GPIB cable actually fit on here? Huh. That's unfortunate. We're going to have to take and do a little bit of Dremel work on there because it won't actually. Now will it plug in? There, it will actually work now. I'm just going to have to scrunch this down and make it a little bit nicer. Take off the sharp corner though so it doesn't bite me sometime. And this sharp corner. There we go. So we have our GPIB adapter mounted. Now we just take it, have to apply it to the thin client, like so. And that is how it will go together. I'm hoping there's a place here to put our. I don't know what that's for. Driver? Who knows? Figure out where we're going to put our memory card. Hope it goes in here.
No, that looks like that is for RAM, maybe? I hope the thing doesn't need RAM. Well, I think I'm going to take it back apart and see if there's a place to put the RAM inside, or the, the storage inside. Bet you this is where this can go. Right here is where our little transcend storage device. Plug in, I'm just making sure all the pins are lined up. And we can reinstall this panel. And there are also a couple more USB ports in there. That's something to be wary of. If you need those USB ports, maybe those are for storage devices. So there we go. And our cable plug in like so. Go ahead and power it up and try it out now. Okay, so it's time to do a quick demo of this now that we've got it set up. Unfortunately, I did not record any of the actual software installation steps. What I ended up doing was I installed Ubuntu 16.04 using a USB stick. So you burn uh, the Ubuntu installer to the USB stick, you stick that in the thin client, then you boot into the Ubuntu on the USB stick and use that to install onto the uh, Transcend storage device. Now, the one thing you have to be a little bit careful of is the Transcend device is only a four gigabyte device and that doesn't leave you a whole lot of free space. So what I did is I, when I was running the Ubuntu installer, I did manually repartition the disk and reduce the amount of swap space so that we would have uh, more space for um, installing the operating system and, and less swap. Um, I think you could probably get away with just turning off swap entirely. Um, and because, you know, we really don't use that much memory on this. I mean, in Linux, it's always nice to have some swap, but on the other hand, the thin client is relatively heavily provisioned for what we actually need to do. Uh, now, your other option, if you wanted to avoid this 4 gigabyte memory limit on the uh, the Transcend device, I think what you could probably do is just install any old USB thumb stick into one of the USB ports and actually install Linux onto that. So you would boot onto one thumb stick with the installer and use that to install onto the other thumb stick that would be your storage drive. And then you could use like a 32 gigabyte thumb stick and you'd have space to spare. Um, so that's another option. But anyway, Ubuntu is already installed. Uh, then I went to the HP Drive website and I found uh, the HP Drive software. I followed its instructions, which had me uh, rebuilding the Linux GPIB driver. Um, it's a little bit involved doing that. Uh, the instructions are all there, but you, you might need to take a couple shots at it to get it right. So you inst install the GPIB driver, then you install the HP Drive software. And then we're ready to launch HP Drive and start serving an image. So let me do that really quick. I'm going to serve an HP UX 5.1, that is, um, image. I think I got this from the um, the HP uh, mailing list. So we'll we'll tell it to uh, simulate an HP 9133. Uh, let's tell it to go. Uh, the size doesn't match up. That's not a problem. 
you just hit yes and it wants another because this uh, 9133 is a floppy hard drive unit it's dual unit it wants um, another disk for the floppy so we just let it initialize a blank one so it's ready to go now over here in this side we have a Pi KVM that's a Raspberry Pi based keyboard video uh, monitor over IP uh, solution that is connected to a scan converter, um, GP8219, I think, scan converter, which is then in turn connected to my HP 9310, which is in turn connected to the HP drive. So we're going to boot that um, HP 9000 computer. I'm going to turn it on. So we can see there it's going through the, uh, the HP boot up. And if everything works, it should um, find the, uh, the simulated drive and boot into HPUX Unix. There we go, booting HPUX. And then we're in the application manager. Let me see if I can remember. Can I get out of here? And if we go back out in here, we can go into bin. I don't want to delete it. Can I open it? See, I don't like graphical user interfaces, but if we find bin and then CSH, And now we're at a good old Unix shell prompt. So we can ls. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, if you're a Unix person, this should be familiar to you. you know, there's ps. Is there anything interesting in here? So I haven't played around with the Unix very much yet. It's, it's a small Unix distribution. Um, you would think there would be a compiler. Is there a C compiler? Looks like it took something. So I'll have to do another video at some point trying out this HP Unix. But the basic point is it did boot off the drive. It did pretty much work. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.